Welcome to today's unboxing of the iChess One, the world's first foldable electronic chessboard that just today was launched as a Kickstarter campaign. Make sure to watch until the end of the video so that you can see how you can get up to 45% off your own iChess One board simply by backing the campaign and becoming an early bird contributor. I'm really excited to unbox the iChess One, so let's go ahead and do it. So here we have the iChess One, the very first look at the board. Let's see, the surface is very smooth. I'm pretty sure these letters and numbers are printed onto the board. That's what it appears. We have a nice little border here, maybe a centimeter. And here we have the five centimeter by five centimeter square. These squares are official FIDE tournament size. And this entire board is therefore also tournament sized. So right here on the sides, so you guys can see it. We have these metal clasps, so let's pop them off. And open up this board. Here we have the first look at the pieces. See right over here, there's a pen. Ooh, that's actually engraved. That's pretty cool. This is engraved into this wood of the pen. It's very nice. Everybody likes a pen. That's cool. Uh, we have pieces here. Let's take a look at this hardware real quick. So this right here is going to be the piece that you are able to connect to the board. Let's see, where is that? Okay, so it's right over here. It's a little challenging to see, but there's a little port right here. I'll show you once I take out the pieces. But that's where this piece should connect. Ooh, magnetically, that's nice. It's a strong connection, I like that. And then this is a USB, a USB end here for connecting to power source or to a wall outlet. And then once we take this off, this right here should be a phone stand. So as we can see right here, there are two slots. One here is a little bit bigger than the one over here, but both of these should hold up a phone. So that is something that's going to be really cool to test out. We have the engraved iChess logo right here. Very nice, one on both sides. A nice wooden accessory there. All right, pawn already came out, so let's take a look at the pawns first. Here we have the two pawns, the white army and the black army. There is a green felt here on the bottom. So here we have the white and we have the black army. We have green felt on the bottom that feels to be fastened on pretty securely, which is something I really like. It's not gonna fall off. And I don't really feel a divot in the center, even though this is an electronic chess set. I don't feel any, any spot where the um, chips or anything would be in here. Maybe there's a small divot on this one, but it's very hard to tell. We have the pawns right here. Let's do the knights next. Knights are pretty cool. So these pieces are all Staunton 5 in style. So this is FIDE approved tournaments themed chess pieces, so you should be fine to go to any old tournament and you could play with this, with these pieces here. I don't know what they'd say about an electronic chess set, but these would be FIDE approved designs. Again, we've got green felt on the bottom of all these, and a finely carved mane right here for the horse. Very nice. Black piece right here. I really like the stain, that brown is very nice. Next, let's check out the bishops. We have the two Staunton 5 bishops. You can see the wood grain on this piece. Very, very nice. I really like this brown stain, I really like that. It's like a nice... It's not super black like the um, other chests that I have. It's over behind me right now, but it's a world chest set. The pieces are very, very dark black. These are are just a brown color, which I think is quite nice. I think it's more of like a natural wood color than the uh, the World Chess Championship set, which is a black stain color, so it's just straight black. But I like this natural look for both of these pieces. So 
two more bishops right here. Again, green felt on the bottom. Next piece is the rook. Here we have the rook. Spin this around a little bit so we can see the wood grains on this piece. And here we have the black piece. Next up the queens. So this chess set actually comes with two sets of queens, which is a must for any real chess set, as I like to say. So we've got all four of the queens right here. That way if you ever do need to promote, you will have an extra queen to do so. Again, this is Staunton 5 style. Green felt for the bottom. And the last piece we have here are the kings for this chess set. So here we are. There's the cross up at the top, nicely carved, very smooth. The next king. Alrighty, so let's set up this board. Next thing we need to do is set up the board. So, got the white pieces always go in the first row, black pieces always go in the eighth row. Do the magnus, straighten out all the pieces just like we like them. And here we have the fully set up I chess one board. Next thing we need to do is, since this is an electronic board, we need to give it some power and see what happens. This board also comes with an app, so I'll connect my app right now, and we will see what this looks like. This board has RGB capable LEDs ingrained into the board surface. As of right now, I don't see any indication that there's LEDs on this board, which is really, really cool, but I'm sure those will appear very, very soon. So let's give this some power. Attach that magnetic connector. Ah, there we go. I saw some green LEDs right there. I don't think that happened when I pressed anything, so I think we're good. Oh, that that did something. Let's move upon. <gasps> That's so cool. So it looks like there's LEDs on both sides of the squares. Let's see what happens when I slide the piece across the board. That's very cool. Looks like instant recognition of where these pieces are. Cool. So these LEDs here on the board, they're only showing up green right now, but they are RGB capable. So we will hopefully very soon see what happens when the LEDs change colors, for example, during a game. So some of the cool features about this chess board are that this board is able to connect with chess GUIs online such as Shredder Chess, Fritz, and Arena Chess softwares. So you can use a fully capable computer and analyze any position on this board. Additionally, as you play games on the iChess1, the board will save the moves and save the data of your chess game so that you can go ahead and use that against Shredder Chess, Fritz, or Arena later on. Next, let's go ahead and connect the iChess1 official app. Well, the very first thing we should probably do is give this board some power, so let's use the magnetic power cable. Snap that on. And I see some green LEDs dancing around on the board, so if I had to guess, we've got some power. Let's open up the app and go to settings. We'll connect the board via Bluetooth. I see board discovered IHS1 connect, so we will connect that. And it says board has been connected. I don't see any LEDs or any lights or anything, no sounds from the board saying it's connected, but the app does say it's connected, so I will assume that everything is good to go. Let's go back to home and let's try a game on leechess.org. Let's see how well this board can connect online. Student, actually, let's not do a new game. Let's do preset. And before we start, I want to see if the board is able to tell that pieces are incorrectly placed. I mean, hopefully. Let's see. Let's put the queen on her color, both sides. And let's also switch a pawn and see what happens. Want to see if it's 
identifying. Okay, it says the board is not ready. Set up your board for start position and then the game search will start. All right, well, let's try putting the queen back, but let's put the queens on the wrong color. All right, still not working. What happens if we switch the queen and the king? The queen has been placed, that's good, but the kings are not accepted. Excellent, we don't want them on the wrong side of the board. And also the pawns are showing red lights, so that means they're incorrectly placed. Let's go ahead and take off some extra pieces and put them down, but again, let's do it incorrectly. Okay, so I put a black piece back here and that one was accepted. However, this white piece is not. So what this should tell us right now is that this board is able to identify each individual piece, which is excellent because that means the board will lose, um, it'll get confused less, I think is the clearest way to say it. All right, right now I see green LEDs along the board over here. It's a little hard to see in the camera, but there are green lights here. So that means I am playing with the white pieces. So let's pick up a piece and I see blue lights right here. So this board is actually telling me the legal moves for the piece I picked up. Let's try a knight. Oh, I took too long. <laughs> the game got aboard. Uh, let's do a new game. And maybe we'll get the black pieces this time so I can uh, just have them on the camera side. So we've got green lights here, same thing that was on the other side. So that tells me that I'm playing with the black pieces. All right, so I pick up a piece and it's showing blue lights, which means this board is actually showing me the legal moves. So actually just so we don't actually abort the game, let's make a move. For the opponent's move, they just played on Lee Chess and it indicates with red LEDs on the square that the piece is leaving and green to the square that the piece is going. Now let's defend with the knight. So when I pick up the knight, it's showing me blue lights for c6 and a6. So it's telling me the legal moves that I can play with this piece, which is actually something I have never seen with an electronic chessboard before. So that is a huge bonus. I really like that. All right, let's copy them. All of these squares lit up blue, so that means the bishop could move anywhere along there. I think the board being able to tell you where your opponent wants, or tells you where you can move, all the legal moves, I think that's a really beneficial thing for beginners because when you're playing an over the board game, a lot of times it can be hard to tell, you know, what to do. So, having all of the potential moves really makes it a lot easier to play chess and to learn how to play chess. However, for more advanced players, I'm not sure that they would want to have the kind of clutter that is apparent when you've got all the squares that a piece can move to. So hopefully there's a way that you can toggle that feature on and off through the app. But right now, let's try castling. See how the, see how the IHS-1 reacts to castling. So if I move the rook first, it's probably just gonna indicate that is a normal rook move. So we don't wanna do that. But we, what we do want to do is pick up the king, and we see blue lights for all of the legal moves here. However, g8 is also illuminated, which, not, which is not normally a legal move, except during castling. So the board knows that we want to castle. So we move the king there, and we'll put the rook right there. It had red lights on h8, and then green lights on f8. And the app has accepted that no problem. Very, very nice. Let's slide the bishop over here. So far, this board has been very quick, very responsive. All right, we have an opponent. Our opponent wants to castle. So it's showing red LEDs under the king, so the king needs to be picked up. And then green lights right here for g1, so we'll put the king down. Now red for the rook, pick him up, and green for F1. It's just adjusting the pieces. They're not in the center of the squares. And everything is looking good. Very nice, okay. Let's play H6. 
Bishop retreats. And let's pick this up and the only legal move is being illuminated here with e8. So we will put the rook right there. Through this little mini game here, I think we've been able to see how the board reacts to different kinds of moves, how it reacts to castling. Um, the available moves we've seen are illuminated, how the pieces are indicated to be moving. So I think this gives us a very good idea of how the pieces move and how quick the board is at responding to moves played online. And the answer is very, very fast. So I'm very happy to see this. And one last thing we should probably do before we finish up this gameplay is to see what a piece capture looks like. So let's go down in flames of glory. Let's hang my queen. So right now my knight is the only one defending my queen from the bishop. So let's go ahead and take this guy right here. And all the, all the squares for the knight were actually illuminated in red, which is pretty cool. And let's see. Yes, there we have it, a capture. So red for the opponent, green for the queen. So the opponent has captured my queen. Very nice. And let's just resign the game right here and see what it does. Are you sure you want to resign? Yes, let's resign. And we've got red lights down here and green lights for the opponent. So that indicates that the opponent has won with the green and I have lost with the red. If you don't know what a Kickstarter campaign is, it's basically a way for new companies to promote their products to the world and make that product idea into a reality. As there's always an element of risk with any kind of investment, Kickstarter is no different. Make sure you know exactly what companies you're investing in and make sure you know what you're getting yourself into. I've got some links in the description of this video that will help you out if you want to do some more research into what the Kickstarter platform is and how companies operate on the website. If you liked what you saw in this video and you want to help back the production of the iChess One, you can use the link in the description of this video to get 45% off the full retail price of the iChess One during the Kickstarter campaign. Otherwise, feel free to click on the screen right now to watch some of the other amazing chess sets that I've unboxed on this channel. I'll see you there.